Good evening, everyone. How are you doing this evening? Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, in the afternoon, I went on a channel to watch some videos for calculus two. Mm -hmm. But I've not seen any. You've not seen any videos at all for calculus two? Yes, sir. Serious? Yes, sir. One month Three. ago was the latest one. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're correct. That is correct. Because I don't put on the, I don't put on last week. Remember last week's calculus? Oh, yes, 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 sir. But I thought yeah. I would just brush up on before class started today. But I mean, um, I should have, but I mean, we've been having some meetings and then, uh, yeah, some other administrative stuff and time tables from a math and finance group and the work works. But yeah, it will be done, of course. All right, sir. Cool. Yeah, All right. Um, so it's your, your 50 minutes grace period is has expired by a minute. Um, trusting and hoping that you are in a better mood tonight for work. And um, let us go. Just to give a little precursor, um, just remember the conversations um, last class. Um, the situation is still is hedged right at the forehead. All right? So just. Just be reminded of what it is that I've said to you because I'm extremely serious about it. So um, just just be on the on the lookout for that. So um, we are oh crap! I need to take Jesus. All right. Uh, we're almost finished with. Um, module one or unit one, uh, I am going to be doing, hopefully starting and finishing tonight, McLaren series. And uh, we have done the differentiation of the logarithm of the exponential function. I will do a quick review. Um, Tiana, you and I will have conversations. And um, we also look at the logarithmic functions and um, what is left for us to do with two other things. I need to look at some sketching of graphs with you and some asymptotic ones, and I need to do some small change um, with you and the, and the, the call it here now, and the McLaren's. McLaren's is, is longer than the other two, so I decided that I'm going to do McLaren's. All being well by Tuesday of next week, I should be finished with module one and move on to the other module which I believe is applications to integration. We will be learning about different methods of approximation, um, integration approximations, and then some other areas. So we're hitting the ball running and running quickly. Good to know that um, it's good when I know that, you know, you guys understand the differentiation. I don't have to spend time to do this and I can know. All right, so um, switch on that. I want to learn switch and let's go. All right, so you should be seeing the screen now and let me be this a little bit. So we are going to be looking at McLaren's theorem for approximating functions with infinite series. Sounds long, really and truly it's not difficult. It's um it's an era that it's an era that I enjoy teaching. Um okay, got to Yannick. It's an era that I enjoy teaching. Um it's a fun area. Um similar to the similar to the what do you call him? Newton Ramson, just differentiation. As opposed to Newton Ramson. Newton Ramson, you do the differentiation one day get a time. And all you need are substituting um, different approximations every time you go into the same differenti differentiation. For the McLarens, on the other hand, you are going to be differentiating the function many times. So those of you who don't like the quotient rule, even though, as I said before, I didn't have a problem um, with Tiana, didn't have a problem with the rest of you, 
um, class wide as it relates to the differentiation um, methodologies, um, it is going to come back here now to haunt us, right? I'm really not worried if I were to be very frank and honest with you as it relates to that. Um, on screen, what you're seeing are two formulas on it. And both formulas are seen the same. I'm just explaining in the second one what is happening here in the first. And let me go through the explanation once more. I did the explanation review um, on Tuesday last week. Um, on Thursday last week, rather. And I will be going through it again. All right. So when you're looking at McLaren's series, McLaren's come. <laughs> They normally meet my parents with some integration questions and they can come up with some 10 marks. If you catch a Newton Ramson and a McLaren together, that would be one full question for 20 marks. If you catch a McLaren with a Newton Ramson together, it's a good 20 marks. All right. And again, it depends on the nature of the of the Newton Ramson. Like the ones that I was given, that I gave to you while you were very silent on me on Tuesday. Some of those were pretty easy for you to do because it was asking for the next one, even though one of them was a multiple choice. So it asked you for the next iteration, um, whereas the others would have asked you to go down up to X4. Once I'm going up to X3, X4, chances are it's, it's, it's more than a five mark, and chances are it's between five and ten marks. Eh? Okay, so McCarran's on the other hand now has a formulation. Remember now, when you look at these approximations, these approximations will have its own formulations. All right? So you need to know the formulation for Newton Ramson. You also need to know the formulation here for McLaren's. When we move over to Taylor series and Simpsons, I don't think we're going to Simpsons, um, you know, it's a different formulation. So there are several different formulations, error formulation, et cetera, et cetera. Right? You need to know all these formulations because each of them will come with a different um, each of the, um, the applications will come with, with this own formulation. All right. So this one says f of x is going to be equal to f of zero. What do I mean by f of zero? f of x is my function. f of x is my function. And f of zero is just me substituting zero into the original function and writing that value down. Then I'm going to add that to the first differential. See, it says f dash of zero of x. So I'm going to find a first differential. When I find a first differential, I'm going to substitute zero into that function, and then I'm multiplying it by x. Then I'm going to add that to finding the second differential. When I find the second differential, I'm going to substitute that zero into the second differential. I'm going to divide that by two factorial, and then I'm going to be multiplying it by x squared. Then I'm going to do the same thing, find the third differential, find f of three, and I'm going to find f of 3 of 0, multiplied by x cubed, divided by 3 factorial. Now, let me just point out some similarities with this um, formulation. Oh, dear. Um, you need to make sure that you're learning so that you can teach her what does that mean. Okay. So, so this is what is going to happen. What I used when I was at your level, Jesus. What, I'm with, what I do, what I did when I was learning this thing is to look at my similarities, which is what I tried to do on here, to take note. This x to the zero, anything raised to the power zero is one. You notice I don't have an x to the zero here because anything raised to the power zero is one. So I could call this x to the zero then x to the 1, then x to the 2, then x to the 3, all the way down to x to the n. What is x to the n, sir? n is going to be the last term. n is going to be the last term, the last number in the series that we want to find. The last decade, decade number in the series that we want to find. Okay, sir, got you. So look at what is also happening. So the power that x is raised to is going to be divided by that factorial. So this is going to be 0 factorial. But fortunately, 0 factorial is not 0. 0 factorial, as, it, as I've shown it here, is going to be equal to 1. Similar to 1 factorial is equal to 1. So 0 factorial is equal to 1, and 1 factorial is equal to 1. All right? So now it is much easier for you to see. If you look along the diagonal here, 
The diagonal here is 0 factorial x to the 0, 1 factorial x to the first, 2 factorial x squared, 3 factorial x cubed, n factorial x to the n. All right? And then this 3 factorial, it means that it's sitting, what is sitting atop the 3 factorial is f of 3. What is sitting atop the 2 factorial is f of 2. What is sitting? The second derivative. What is sitting atop one factorial is the first derivative. What is sitting on atop zero factorial is the original function. Right? So in a case like this, I will have to go and find the first differential right here, so the second differential, the third differential, and I can go up and I can go up, depending on what the question asks of me. All right. So you have to be differentiating the function multiple times. They can give you an exponential function. They can give you a logarithmic function. They can give you a, 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 a fractional function, a radical function, we'll call it. They can give you a polynomial function. They can give you any type of function. We don't know what function they are going to give you. But guess what? You see, because you know to differentiate, any function among you, I would have said, just take some time and just sit down and just differentiate the function. Make sure you differentiate the functions and you differentiate the functions correctly. You know the rules. And I will repeat them. The first times the differentiation of the second, plus the second times the differentiation of the first. That's the product rule. The first times the differentiation of the second, plus the second times the differentiation of the first. That's the product rule. The quotient rule is the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator times the differentiation of the denominator all over the denominator squares. All right? So it's the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator times the differentiation of the denominator all over the denominator squares. All right? So those are they. Uh, are there any questions? To be honest with you, there's nothing more to it than this. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Um, so is it that you are going to differentiate until you have zero or the question will tell you how many times to differentiate? Um, both. Sometimes they will ask you to find it, which is that you have to differentiate until you get zero. It means that you will end up getting zero, maybe x3, x4, um, sometimes maybe x5, or sometimes they will tell you when to differentiate, when to end the differentiation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, if there are no more questions, let us just together work through one. I did a factorial with you already um, on Tuesday. Remember, when I speak of five factorial, it's going to be five times four times three times two times one. If you have a good type calculator, um, I did say that I was going to get my, my email later so that I can um, show you what is happening. You should be seeing my screen. Um, my factorial rocks down. My factorial is okay. Jesus has to say in factorial thing. All right, pressing pause. Um, I had a beautiful exercise to show you guys on Tuesday, but you know, um. Time loss will never, ever, 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 ever be regained. I really can't go back into the past. So I really can't show you how to do that on the calculator for tonight. So let us see what is going to happen. But I know the reason I got the, this version of the calculator. So that's a digital calculator? Um, yes, it is. Um, so I, 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 well, it's linking from my, that's the calculator that I have working with now. So it's linking from it. Um, oh, crap. Anyhow, forget about that. Um, I wanted to show you something here, but right. So five factorial is me saying five times, sorry, let me just clear the calculator here, delete all, yeah. So it's gonna be five times four times three times two times one, and that's gonna be equal to 120. All right, that's gonna be equal to 120. And if I say to you, six factorial, is six times five times four times three times two times one, and that is going to be equal to 720, all right? So when you talk about factorial, you're just counting down. So 100 factorial for argument six is 100 times 99 times 98 times 97 times dot, 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 times two times one, all right? So you are going to just be counting down 
and getting all of that. For common stats, you would have done things like the permutation notation and the combination notation, NCR and NPR, right? This course won't necessarily ask you to do any NCR, NPR, so I won't go through any of those, all right? So what is happening here now, you will need to know, be reminded what the factorial notation is because you're going to be required to, to um, you're going to be required to, to evaluate those. All right, so Yanni, so your question was, sir, when do I stop? How do I know when to stop? When it ends, some functions is differentiable um, up to infinity, meaning that it have no ending. And especially when you have a rational function of this nature, all right? Because you're always, um, you know, to find the, the, the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator times the differentiation of the denominator um, all over the denominator squares. So you'll always have a function differentiating when you have a rational function in this case. So in this case, the question says expand one over x plus one up to, and including the term x to the fifth, rock stone. So in this case, it means that when we are differentiating, we now need to go up to x to the fifth. Where's x to the fifth, sir? x to the fifth is going to be found here. So this is x to the third. Then we have to go to the other one more time. x to the fourth. We have to do it one more time. x to the fifth. Watch me. x to the third is corresponding to the third differential. x to the second is corresponding to the second differential. x to the first is corresponding to the first differential. So therefore, x to the fifth is going to correspond to what differential? Okay. The fifth differential. So how many times do you have to differentiate this function? Too many times. Six times, sir. Many times, sir. Mm -hmm. That same number of times. Very good. So let us go. Let us go. So it's very important to name the function. You know this. You know this from little school. Calculus one, that is. Right? You know this. So what we're going to be doing now is differentiate. We need to name the function because the question does say expand one over that. We can't do this. We can't do this. You girl, you boy. I don't know who to. Right? And it's funny enough that um, even though some people don't call to you girl, you boy, some people are parents um, or some people are teachers. And they say, sir, there are so many sirs around. So sometimes, you know, when sir is running, I call sir. You know, answer. Mr. Shana, you met. I said, you man, well gone. Right? Or, um, you know, you know, going, mommy. And you have all the different moments turning around. Um, yeah, so um, you can say, Mommy Sophie, Mommy Sonia, Mommy Denise, you know, whatever else the situation is. Naming is important, that's the point. All right, so I'm going to let my function, I'm going to let f of okay. x be equal. Go ahead. Before, before we go into the explanation of the naming and everything, um, just looking at the question again. So if it had just said expand up to and not say and including what would have what would we where would we stop at the fourth one no man the question the question would have been incomplete because this one mean that it has to go up it it, it has to go long, go long, go long, go long, go long. this function I go so go long, I'm saying if it said expand up to term 5x that means it would have, that means it would, have, it would have end at um 5x then you got to end at the fifth differential yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the reason ahead, I asked is because it made a point of saying and including. So I was wondering if it is that expanding up to that wouldn't mean that. Oh, so you're okay. You're okay. I, I think what you say, I think you're saying now expand. Okay. So you can expand. All right. I, I think I get what you're asking. I wasn't understanding what you're asking for. Right. So what I'm saying to you is in this particular case, we wanted to expand up to the fifth term, but I also want to include the fifth term. No, so what I'm asking, if it didn't say and include it, when we go through, can you show me how different the answer would have been? If it didn't say and include the fifth term. So if it had just said expand up to the fifth term. Okay, all right, fine. I'll show you when we go through. Uh, no thanks. Mm -hmm. cool, cool. All right, so after we've named the function, then it's no time to differentiate. No, before we do the differentiation, you know. Um, one other thing that I do, I don't know how else to represent this on screen. Um, differentiation, substitution, differentiation, substitution. Um, I don't know. You know I'll, I try to put everything together on screen, but see if you can work with me. So this is a function. From there, 
I have it here. I am differentiating this function. No, live, before I do that. So remember we said that, I, I don't, I didn't have to stop right here, but. I'm hot. Um, remember I said to you that we need to find f of zero. So I'm just gonna evaluate all the, the, the things as I go along, right? Um, so now I have my f of x. I'm gonna evaluate f of zero. I'm evaluating f of zero. f of zero is all the way over here. That's my f of zero. Anywhere in the function f of x, I see x, I put zero. That's what f of zero is. Um, no, hold on. Hold on, please. This is FC. Yeah, sorry about that. So anywhere in the function f of x, I see x, I put zero. So remember, when we, to do McLaren's, as opposed to newton ramson newton ramson says we differentiate the function one time. We just need to find f dash of x. Based on the formula, we just need to find f dash of x. McLaren's, on the other hand, you have to differentiate multiple times you have to differentiate them multiple times, all right? Now, at each point, including f of zero, you have to substitute zero into the function. So you're finding f of zero, and every differential that you find, you're substituting zero inside of it, all right? So if we evaluate f of zero first, if we evaluate f of zero first, anywhere in f of x, I see x, I put zero. So this is f of zero is equal to one over zero plus one. Zero plus one is one, one over one is one. So this is why my f of zero is going to be equal to one. I say to you, do the question like who I'm doing it. You find each, at each step, you find your f of zero. Should in case time runs out on you, at least the marker can see that you have successfully evaluated all of these stuff. Even if you can't put it into the formulation, at least you know that you, you, you'll get marks for these steps because each of these differentiation, you will get some marks for. That's why the question carries so many marks. All right, now I have completed the first part. The question says I'm supposed to go up to the fifth differential. So this is just the first piece. I don't even start differentiating it, but let's just go. This is a quotient. How do you know again, sir? You have a numerator and a denominator. How do we do it? It's the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator times the differentiation of the denominator all over the denominator squares. Watch me. The denominator, you call it, you write it back. Times the differentiation of the numerator. When I differentiate the numerator constant, I get zero. See it right here, so? Minus the numerator, minus the p zero says minus one. See it right here, so? Times the differentiation of the denominator. When I differentiate x, I get one. When I differentiate one, I get zero. So the differentiation of here is going to be one. See here? Times one. All over the denominator squared. It's all over x plus one all squared. So, get yourself. so this is my differentiation. This is my middle step when I'm going to fix it up before I substitute x equals zero. Because I'm not going to substitute x equals zero right here. So it's too untidy. So I'm going to fix it up. Zero times anything is zero. So all of this goes. And I'm going to have negative one times one is negative one all over my x plus one all squared. So this is my final differentiation. When I substitute zero into the function, anywhere in f dash of x, I see x, I put zero. This is going to be negative one over zero plus one all squares. Zero plus one is one, one squares is one, so negative one over one is negative one. See here? f dash of zero is going to be negative one. 
So let's go again. And I know there are two of you in the class that did some calculus um, long before last semester. So your differentiation may not be where it's supposed to be. So I'm very mindful of that. Um, I, I can agree with that one. <laughs> yeah, man, well, you're one of the two I'm talking about. Um, so, all right, so let's go again now. So, so it's the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator. The denominator times the differentiation of the numerator. The numerator is here, zero. Minus the numerator, minus one, times the differentiation of the denominator. When I differentiate the denominator, here it's going to be differentiation of a constant is zero. Differentiation of x is going to be one. Please direct this up. All over the denominator square. So when I differentiate the denominator, sorry, the denominator square is going to be x plus one. And I'm going to square it. So I'm going to get x plus one all squared. Now, what I normally do is to fix up, and I'm going to say this to you. You can go into the exam. Matter of fact, let me just see this. Let me just say this. Here are some questions in calculus too that you don't get wrong. Because there are some areas in calculus too that is going to get a little challenging. And I feel straight up. So there are areas in calculus too that you don't get wrong because you can't lose them points here because you will come upon areas in calculus too that is going to cause you to think and crash your head. And if you lose a couple of marks right here, so at least them one foo foo something you're going to do, you don't lose the marks for it. So I want you to be very mindful of what it is that we're doing. All right? <laughs> okay, I hear you. You might hurt and come back. All right. So when I fix up my differential, I am going to get here and I'm substituting my zero. Remember, you know, when I've completed my differential, I'm going to find f of zero, f dash of zero, f double dash of zero, f triple dash of zero, f to the fourth dash of zero, and x to the fifth dash of zero in this particular question because I want us to go up to x to the fifth and include x to the fifth in an answer. All right? So watch me now. We're going to get f dash of zero to be equal to negative one. Mm, all right, sir, I see it. We have here now, sir. We now have to differentiate the first differential in order to obtain the second derivative. But you remember that, you know, remember we, in order for you to get the second differential, this is what we have to use now. I understand why I have to write this right here, sir. I have to write this because I can't use this to differentiate. This is very untidy. This is very untidy. So I have to now use this now to differentiate. Now remember, and I want you to use to differentiate. Now the power rule comes into play here because it's still a quotient. So it is still the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator times the differentiation of the denominator all over the denominator squares. Watch me. I'm not going to go through that. Watch me. Oh, crap. I'm such a nice guy that I tried to explain everything here for you. Let me just let me just recall something here with you. Recall the power rule, x plus one to the second power. Remember, this two is going to come in front of here. See it right here, so, and I use my colors to represent it. And then I'm going to subtract one from the power, two minus one. Then I'm going to differentiate the inside here. So, remember this is one x. When you see x like that is one x coefficient of the x is going to be one. The differential of a constant is zero. When I differentiate x, I'm going to get one. And that's why I get this one here. Remember, when you're doing a power rule, you're going to use the power to come in front of here. But remember that you have to differentiate on the inside of the parentheses. Very important. I'm going to get that. All right. Um, and of course, two minus one is one. So I'm going to have two times x plus one to the first times one, uh, which is this. And this two times this one is going to be two. And x plus 1 to the first is simply x plus 1. All right? So that's my. Sir. <laughs> What's up? Sir, sir, that's how we get funny about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh, oh boy. I was hoping you were going to pay attention in the this one. Do you seem to be a scarlet? Do you shall become as white as snow? All right, so let me just go through the, 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 the stuff again because, as I said before, that's why it is called applications of your differentiation. You may do a whole lot of differentiation in, in, um, in Mr. In Mr. Um, McLaren's sort of stuff. Every step you go along the way, you are differentiating. You don't have no ease of You can differentiate and differentiate and differentiate and more differentiation and more differentiation. Here, ease of You have to differentiate. For each leg of the way, for Newton Ramson, one shot says so either hit or a miss. All right, this one here you have to go differentiate. This is a hit term, you know, because if you differentiate, of course, something wrong. It means that every, if this is wrong, you know, it means that everything else you differentiate there after wrong. So I'm saying to you just and, and trust me, I don't think that also about the method is right. You still will lose your mark. You will get a mark or two. If you incorrectly use the correct, if you correctly use the incorrect stuff, you will get a mark, but you're not going to get a full mark for the question. Let's go. Re recall. Recall. Y is equal to x plus one to the second power. I'm differentiating using the power rule. It's going to be this two up top here, so carry forward in front of right here, so see right here, so. Then I'm going to subtract, I'm going to reduce this. Remember, when you, when you differentiate it, take one from the power. When you integrate, you add one to the power. So I'm going to subtract one from the power. So this two is going to be two minus one, see, right? So, but best believe that I have to know differentiate what is inside the parentheses and differentiate what is inside here. So when you differentiate x, you're going to get one. So times the differential of the inside. And then now I'm multiplying this one by this two to give me two. And two minus one up in the power here. So gives me one. And anything raised to the first power is the thing itself. So this is going to be the answer to that question. So let us go now. Let us go. Work with me. Because this is on the second differential that we reach, you know. We have the third differential. All right, forgive me for this here. I just have to put this recall inside here so that you can remember what is happening here. So this is my first differential. I have to use my first differential in order to find my second differential. I have to use my first differential in order to evaluate my second differential. I cannot use anything else. So therefore, I must take note, I must take note of my first differential, ensuring that my first differential is correct. If my first differential is incorrect, it is going to throw off everything else. Trust me. You know how to differentiate. Make sure that your differentiation is on point. Okay, so having my first differential, oh, and incidentally, what is very important, you know, one of them is that differentiate from the P series, so the P series untidy. Fix it up first into a simplified form before you start your second differentiation. In the answer is my simplified form. And I made sure I write it like this because I want you to follow me. You know, after write it static, so you can write it underneath it, but make sure so you fix it up. Don't use this because you can get mixed up. How you can say the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator. You can't differentiate this so. So just fix it up. So you just one day and get something in the numerator. All right? Okay, so now it's the denominator. The denominator, x plus one all squared, c right so. The denominator times the differentiation of the numerator. The numerator is a constant. The differentiation of a constant is zero, c right so. Minus the numerator. Oh, with a minus sign, must say this here. But the numerator is also minus, so that's why I have a minus, minus one, up two. Times the differentiation of the denominator. Watch this power rule I just showed you. Now, two here, we can come in front of this. See the two here, so? Then I'm going to reduce this by one. So it's going to be two minus one, which is one. So we have x plus one to the first power. Then I'm going to differentiate what is on the inside here. So differentiating x plus one. This is going to give me one. Why, sir? Because the differential of a constant is zero. The differential of x is one. Got you. All over the denominator squares. Watch me. 
the denominator squared is going to be x plus 1 squared squared. And remember, you multiply the two squares, so you're going to get x plus 1 to the 4. All right. Sir, run back that again. All right. All right, let me just see if I can find my calculus one. Um, calculus one, differentiation. Oh, I meant to say something from, from week one, you know. Uh, those of you who who were borderline in calculus one, I am going to ask you to, I'm gonna ask you to um, make sure that you, you were doubly hard, right? Not that the ones who get, who weren't borderline, the rest of you, all of you will have to work hard. But in particular, um, those who were borderline, it means that it's just like you got a grade three for CSET math. It means that you, you have enough information that you can move on to the other level, but you don't have a mastery of the, the level that you just completed but you have enough that you can build on. If you slack off, calculus 2 is going to be a problem. That's the point I'm making. I congratulate all of you. Congratulate all of you. But I'm just saying to you, if you slack off, if you miss it for one class, it's going to throw you off and throw you off badly. I have seen it happen to students before. I've seen it happen to students before. All right? And you don't want this to happen to you. You don't want calculus 2 to be the course that you can't pass in order for you to finish off your bachelor's. All right? So let me go through this again. I'm just going to do a, a quick little refresher on this one here. The power rule, given y is equal to 2x plus 5 to the second power, we are asked to find d by dx. The function here is y, and I'm trying to find d by dx. It means that I'm trying to differentiate this function. When I differentiate, I subtract 1 from the power. So watch me. This 2 is going to come in front of here. So see it right here, so anything in the power up here, so we're going to multiply it in front of here, so right here, so. And then we're reducing this power by one. So we're still going to have to write back my 2x plus 5. Then I put it to the first power. See, so write yourself. Then now I have to differentiate what is on the inside of the parentheses. And differentiating what is on the inside, the differential of 2x plus 5 is going to be simply 2. Why? See, write yourself. Why, sir? Because the differentiation of a constant here is 0, which is 5 is 0. And the differentiation of 2x is going to be 2. Note, recall is going to be 2 times. Sorry, recall times two is obtained from the differential of what is inside the parentheses. The one here is the differentiation of what is inside the parentheses, right? You always multiply by the differential of the inside of the parentheses. One, we are required to differentiate the inside of the parentheses and to apply the power rule, the index must not be equal to one. So if this power, if this is one, we don't have to use the power rule. The power rule is only for those functions that could be greater than one. All right? The power rule is only for functions that is greater than one. And then all I'm going to be doing now is this two multiplied by this two is going to give you this four. And of course, anything with the first power is just that thing itself. So because this power here is one, I can then distribute this four over the parentheses. If the power was greater than one, I can't multiply both irsos by what is on the inside irsos. But only because the power here is one, I can remove the power and I can then dis dis distribute this four over the parentheses. So four times two x is eight x, and four times five is 20. I'm trying to find something into the power rule. Um, And of course, this was calculus one. So, not, not seeing anything else here. 
Okay. Dear Gonzalez, you can share with a power rule. The second piece here, sir, is the, with a power rule. 4x squared minus half to the second power. When I'm differentiating this, and I'm differentiating this. No, let me not do that because that comes into something else. Um, all right, let me just squeeze in this piece. So the first times the second. So this is a product. So the first times the differentiation of the second. Now I'm going to differentiate the second. I'm differentiating this. The second is what is going to be in color. All right. So the first is what I wrote back. The second is what I'm differentiating in color. So this is a power rule. So watch me with the power rule. This four is going to multiply in front of it. See it right here. So. And I'm going to write back the function. Five minus two x cube. And I'm reducing this power by one. So it comes, it comes three. But remember, you have to differentiate inside the parentheses. My five is a constant. The differentiation of my constant is equal to zero. And I differentiate negative two x cube. This three times this negative two gives me negative six. Negative six x. And I subtract with by one, it becomes negative six x squared. This is why I have this negative six x squared here. So that's what the power rule says. We take the function, the power, and multiply it in front of the, 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 the function itself, reduce it by one, and then multiply by the differentiation of the inside. That's all it is saying. All right? Going back to know what it is that we're doing here. Let me go through this again. It's a denominator. See if I can answer times the differentiation of the numerator. The differentiation of a constant is equal to zero every single time. See it yourself? Zero. Minus the numerator, so it's minus a uh, negative one. Right so Times the differentiation of the denominator. Now the differentiation of the denominator is where the power rule comes in play. So you're gonna say now this two multiply in front of yourself. See it right so Then you reduce it by one. So you become x plus one to the first. X plus one to the first. Then I have to differentiate on the inside of the parentheses. When I differentiate x plus one, the plus one is a constant, goes to zero. When I differentiate x, I get one, and that's this one right here. So. And it's all over the denominator squares. Um, all right, got it. Um, okay, great, great. I am just, I'm in two minds. Should I read like that? All right, yeah. So just remember, no, it's going to be over the denominator squares, squares. So that's how we get to the fourth power, right? What I'm trying to show you is that all of this goes to zero. All of that something here goes to zero. All of this goes to zero. Why, sir? Because zero times anything is zero. So all I'm left with now is going to be negative one, negative one times negative one is positive one. Positive one times two is positive two. Two times one is two. So we have two over x plus one. And I'm going to have over x plus 1 to the 4. This x plus 1 will cancel with one of these. So I'm just going to have positive 2 over x plus 1 to the 3rd. Um, you would agree with me that there are some lines that are going to be missing because, you know, you know how to differentiate. And I really wanted to show you. My aim in this question is not to teach differentiation because you should know how to differentiate. All right? So I would really have an, an extra line showing you that this, one, this, mm -mm, this piece goes to 0. And then I'm left with all of this here as negative two x plus one um, over x plus one to the fourth, and then show you that cancellation. I just move to this. So this is my final answer. So yes, we have maybe one or two more steps in between, and this is my final answer. All right? Okay, so let's go. So now it is that I'm gonna have two over x plus one to the third power. See it right here, so two plus x plus two over x plus one to the third. I'm now substituting zero into the function. Remember, after every differentiation, you are going to substitute zero. So it's going to be two over zero plus one cube. Zero plus one is one. One cube is one. So we have two over one, which is two. See right here, so. And we have two right here. All right? So I'm getting my two right here. And that's what it is. So I have three sets of values just known. F of zero, F dash of one, negative one, and I now calculate my f double dash of zero. I now need to find the third differential. The third differential, but I have to use it from here. So by now you're supposed to agree with me that, sir, a pure differentiation in another topic here, absolutely. 
McLaren. I will see again the difference between McLaren and, and Newton Ramson. Newton Ramson will differentiate the function one time. Oh, thank you. So let me just pause. Let me pause and say something here. I want you to listen carefully to what it is that I'm saying. Very careful. All right? Because sometimes, like for a multiple choice question, they may say to you, which of the formulation is correct for um, Newton Ramson? Let me just go through this one. So they may give you a multiple choice question. Um, let me give you this one here. Um, let me give you this question here and ask you to do to two lesson places. I may know that our B here is going to be the correct answer. Solution here, let me just hold it so that we can do this stuff right. So we know that B is going to be our answer right here. Um, they can ask you, they can say to you, which of the following is the formulation of or Newton Ramson, and they can give you some stuff here like x to the zero is e, um, x to the n is equal to x to the zero plus f of x to the zero over f dash of x to the zero. And they can mix up the formulation and ask you which of them is correct. You follow the sequence. As I sh I've shown you, you can't go wrong. So just listen to how it is that I'm explaining the stuff. And based on the explanations that I'm given, sometimes they may give you a multiple choice question where you don't calculate anything at all. But they will ask you which of the following represents the correct formulation for to evaluate a question with Newton Ramson or several iterations, right? You have to look at the formulation. Sometimes what they will give you is something, something, is something, something plus this over this, or they may give you the minus, but put f dash of x to the n in the numerator and f of x to the n in the denominator, right? And sometimes they may put like x2 and then put x1 right um x3 right here so right this can't be this can't be um smaller than this inside here because every time you go you're actually finding a, a bigger iteration so you have to understand the formulation because they can mix it up just to see if you are truly following what it is that the question you see just in, i thought i would share that with you all right um so let's go to miss, go back to Mr. McLaren. So having found the second differential, let us go now to the third. Remember, we now use this untidy something. This is my first part of the question, you know. I'm fixing it up with my differentiation. When I get my final differentiation, I'm showing what the final differentiation is. Sorry, then you couldn't show where all the pieces. No, we leave all the pieces in calculus one. May I show you the final piece? Why, sir? Because we, it is the final piece that we're going to be using to differentiate the next piece. So I need to know what the final piece is so I can show you the differentiation. Let's go. It's always the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator times the differentiation of the denominator all over the denominator squares. Watch it. The denominator, x plus 1 to the third. See, try to say? The denominator, right there, so. Times the differentiation of the numerator. So the differentiation of a constant is 0. See, try to say. Minus the numerator, minus 2. See, try to say. Times the differentiation of the denominator. Power rule again, sir. Very good. 3, yes, sir. But in front of this thing, yes, sir. See, try to say. And incidentally, this is not 2.3. In big school, we use dot to represent multiplication. And then we're going to reduce this one by one. So it becomes x plus 1 to the second. See, try to see. And then we differentiate what is inside the parentheses. The differentiation of x plus 1 is simply going to be 1. See, try to see. All over the denominator squares. Mm -hmm. Got to serve. The denominator squares is going to be x plus 1 cubed squared. So remember, say multiply the two powers, so three times two is six. That's a code for this six right here. So, all right. So we need to fix it up. Zero times all of this here, so goes to zero. So what I have now is negative two times three is negative six. Negative six times one is negative six. And this x squared plus one, mm -mm, this x plus one all squares, been divided by this x plus one 
a positive 6 power is going to reduce it to 4. This cancel out. Two of these six, I'm going to have four of them left. Bear in mind, let me do this here, because I don't know what is giving a foolishness. Bear in mind what it is that Sir always says to you. Oh, bear in mind, all of that goes to zero. All of this goes to zero. So you're not canceling this at a negative sign. You can only cancel this at a multiplication sign. So we're not canceling this at a negative sign. As I said before, there are two or three, two or three other steps that are that are missing that I won't write. I'm only interested in the final answer. So all and, of this and, goes to zero. And sir, we won't write it, right? So it's you, like what you're doing here. Um I would say you write it on paper so that you know that you know exactly what it is that you're doing because you still have to write it in order to evaluate it. So write it on paper so I can pick up where it is that you would have gone wrong if you went wrong, so I can award the marks accordingly. For ease of calculation, and because I'm not teaching a differentiation, I did not write the additional steps. That's what I'm saying, but you will have to write it. A question like this, as I said before, comes about 10 marks. I will have marks that. You can't play with it, all right? So this goes to zero. So all I'm going to have now is negative two times three times one is negative six. So this is going to be negative six over let me be creative. So this, this x plus one all squares is going to go into this six and reduce it by two. So it becomes x plus one to the fourth. And that's why I have this x plus one to the fourth right here. So forth and so on. You'd have seen it up here. This is to the first power. So it, it reduce it by, it gone to third. All right? So this is now going to be my third differential. Once you reach right here, so all trees are easy because anywhere in here, so you see x, you put zero. So f triple dash of zero, see here? f triple dash of zero. Anyway, so x, you put zero. Zero plus one is one. One to the fourth power, simply one. So you have negative six over one, which is just negative six. So that piece Sorry. here is negative six. Yes, please. Um, I don't know if, if this would be a normal case, but what I realize when you put the zero there, it's going to be a whole number, basically, or depending Very on good. The, the, don't say a whole number, because it could also yeah. be a fraction. Right. It means, it means that you're, not, you're, you're getting rid of the variable. I know that's what it means. Am I right? It, it's a variable that you're getting rid of. So it's, it's just going to be a number. Could be fractional or it could be whole. Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Because anywhere in the function you see x, you're going to substitute zero. Yes. Yes. All right. And then we are going to go through the fourth differential. The denominator times the differentiation of the numerator, constant zero, minus the numerator, minus a minus six. Whoopsie daisy. I made a mistake right here, so I left a minus. That not upon a while ago, sir. I'm just now working to it. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, I apologize. You see, you teacher can make mistakes. But the answer is right, though, because I, I still have my positive 24. So it's a denominator here. The denominator times the differentiation of the numerator to zero minus the numerator minus the minus six times the differentiation of the denominator, which is four, bam, x plus one to the third, so you write yourself, times one. Watch me. This is four squares, it becomes eight now. So we have eight right here. So remember, the whole of this go to zero. You want me to colorize it? To set it instead of the whole of that one that go to zero. The whole of that go to zero, and then we have negative six times a negative one is a positive six. Six times four is 24, 24 times one is 24. And then this x plus one to the third, I'm gonna go in at this and leave five. See, try it yourself, x plus one to the fifth. Anywhere I see x, I put zero. One plus zero are one to the fifth are still one. 24 over one are 24. So I have that here to be 24. 
to have that to be 24. You notice I'm speeding it up. Why? Because of the same thing I'm repeating myself over and over. All right? Now I have this piece here. I'm um, to the fourth differential. Remember the question said up to fifth, up to and including x to the fifth. It means I have to go one more time. The denominator, bam, C try it here, so. Times the differentiation of the numerator, bam. Then, sir, every time I go have the numerator to be equal to zero? No. Watch the function. See what the function is asking and work accordingly. All right? I don't want anybody to be stereotyped in my questions to say, oh, sir, this is an all the time I'm going to have zero. So mm -mm. whatever the function gives you, twerk it. So it's the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator, which is zero. So all of this I give way go to zero. All of that piece goes to zero. Minus the numerator, so it's going to be minus a 24. Times the differentiation of the denominator of power rule. Five in front of your so C to so times X plus one, reduce it by that to the four, times the differentiation of the inside, which is one. All over the denominator squares. Now watch me. If this is five, when you square it, you're not getting 25, you're getting 10, because remember when you're multiplying and the base are the same. Sorry, A to the M raised to the N is M times N. So this is going to be five times two to give you 10. But you're taking out four out here. So if you're reducing it, you're taking four from that, so it's going to leave six. So this negative 24 times this positive five is negative 120, and negative 120 times one is negative 120. And I'm going to have over x, one plus x to the six. You substitute zero, you're going to have negative 120. Then, sir, we never could have negative values. But all the other values you get so far, sir, are positive. Okay. Yeah, man. Oh, well, sir, sir, I recognize in something. The f of zero, sir, is positive. Is negative, sir. No, positive, right? F of zero is positive. Then F one of zero, sir, is negative. So the first differential is negative. But, sir, F of two is positive. And F of three is negative. And F of four is positive. And F of five is negative. Then, sir, if you do F of six, it's going to be what? Positive or negative? Positive. 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 Oh, welcome back, Charles. Positive, right? So you can look at this stuff. And I remember when I was teaching calculus to um, last year this time, you know, by the time the students started doing the second question on their own, they were able to pick up the sequence. I won't tell you, I want you to discover it, discovery learning. So now that we've completed our differentiations, sir, then how much mass to get here, so plenty of mass, because the bulk of the work would have done from here, so here, so getting the f of two, f of three, f of four, and f of five. Now we're going to substitute it into the formula. Oh, so with the formula again, let me just copy it and show you. Um, so the formula here is pretty much telling you what it is that you're going to be doing. Your f of zero, remember f of zero was one, see to yourself, f of zero is one. So we can do, see your f of zero here, one. Your f dash of zero of x, your f dash of zero, f dash of zero was negative one. So we can have negative one, see to yourself, negative one. But remember, say it have one x, side x, so that's how that x is coming to play, right? Your f double dash of zero, your f double dash of zero is two. So your f double dash of zero is supposed to be positive two. I had a negative two, it's supposed to be positive two. All right? Um, this one's supposed to be positive two. Oh, I Typing. May I teach face to face when I have the problems in and come in with a question from something? All right. Plus. All right. So let's go now. So my f of my f dash of x. No, that's not where I was. I was here. My f double dash is going to be two. So my f double dash here so is my f double dash of zero is two. So we have positive two over two factorial. See here, positive two over two factorial. But you can't leave my x squared. So the x squared each upside of it. Now we reach f triple dash. f triple dash of zero is negative six. 
So if triple dash of zero, here so, so we have negative six over three factorial, see to yourself, negative six over three factorial, and I'm going to itch up my x cube. All right, sir, but I don't see you have no x to the fourth and x to the fifth, but I'm going to follow you, sir. x to the fourth is 24, so it's going to be plus 24 over four factorial. If you follow the sequence, see here, plus 24 over four factorial x to the fourth. And then my f to the fifth now is going to be minus 120 factorial over five factorial. See here, minus 120 over five factorial f to the fifth. And then I post plus dot, 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 because I'm telling you that the, 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 the series continues. It doesn't end. So we normally say plus dot, dot, dot to show that it continues. I'll be only one to stop right here. So. And then my final step now is to, is to go ahead and do the evaluation. This one is this one. Negative one times x is just negative x. Two over two factorial. Watch this. Two factorial is two factorial is two. So two over two is one, and one times x squared is just simply x squared, right? Three factorial is three times two is six. Three factorial is three times two times one, and three times two is six times one is six. So we have six over six is minus one x cubed. See here, minus x cubed. Four factorial. Four factorial. Four factorial is Four times three 24, times two times, huh? 24, 24, very good, very good. They're showing it here, so 24. So it's going to be 24 over, 24 over 24, which is one. So you're going to just say x to the fourth. See, try it here, so. And five factorial is the same thing as 120. So it's negative 120 over 120, which is negative one, x to the fifth. So this is my McLaren's expansion, and that will be my final answer. So what? is it safe to say that the factorial will be equivalent to the numerator? <laughs> Not all the time. Okay. That's, what I, that's what I was saying. I don't want you to look at the question. A very good question, you know. Love the question. But I don't want you to look at the question stereotypically to say that, okay, this is always going to be. You know what? One is the first example, and two, no, not always be like that. Depends on the function. You may always get a question that works out like that but another function will give you something different, all right? How you feel with this now? It's a whole lot, yes, I know. But remember, all you're doing is, is um, oh Lord Jesus, I never did these. So how am I going to manage them? I'm going to sit down and do the other one, something like One over two plus three. Oh, I need a second one. Uh, give me a moment to write down. Sure, no problem, but I'm just saying that we not really in number two now because I was being such a nice teacher that I never did number two, but I did number three. All right. So it's what I'm saying to you here. Um, just to give you a little glance, we don't always get whole numbers um stash, but yes, we're not we have any x terms here. We are going to be substituting the x value. So we get some ugly looking fractions right here. Yeah. Um, I did I wrote this question, but I didn't do it, so I'm not going to do this question because um I want you to be able to do this stuff on, on your own. All right. Where do you want me to, right to pause it? Right here? Okay. So, uh, of course, I'm, go ahead, Charles. So, when they don't give you, um, like, where you're supposed to go up to, what would I you would do in you. that case? No, I will tell you. They will tell you. They will tell you. Um, for, for, for these purposes, like for the second question, you didn't say I put anything there. Is because I, it's for teaching purpose. But the questions will have to tell you because if they don't tell you and you decide to support number two and then they want to go for number four, then you can't penalize you. So they will, they will tell you. The question will indicate. Don't worry about it. It's just for teaching purposes and I really want you to get the hang of it. I will tell you where, how far to go. Sir, <clears throat> sir, remember one question from earlier. Yeah, man, I remember your question, man. I, I, I remember your question. There is. Um, Anyway, Christian, what I want you to do is just to focus on this piece for now until I get there. So I want you to go up to X to the fifth again. Then, sir, all the time I've up to the X to the fifth, no. My aim in giving you up to x to the fifth, I think it's x to the fifth that I went up to this one. Yes. My aim in giving you x to the fifth is just to get you 
um, into the secret series of of, um, of the you know, multiple integrants, right? So now you're talking about not only finding the first differential, it's an answer, the fourth, the fifth, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the aim. All right, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm skipping example two. I, and then I'm going to ask you, even if you don't get all of it just yet, let's just do it in trances. It says expand one over two X plus three using McLaren series up to. Um, up to, up to, up to, and including. Uh, Up to and including the term in X to the fifth. Let me just be very specific right here. All right. Um, right. So the first thing that you're going to be doing, and I'm going to give you some time to work on this for me now. The first thing that you're going to be doing is to, you can write the function down. Please, 1 over 2x plus 3. 1 over 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to project this so that you can follow what is happening. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Right. Um, so you can follow what is happening. Uh, I am going to find the first differential. No, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use the original function. F of x, which is 1 over 2x plus 3. I'm going to let f of x be equal to 1 over 2x plus 3 first. Then I'm going to find f of 0. f of 0, which is the original function. And I substitute 0, put that down. Then I'm going to differentiate the original function. When I get the differential of putting zero in there, write on the answer. Then I'm going to use that and find the second derivative, then the third and so forth and so on. So I'm going to ask you to use this as a guide. I'm going to give you about five to about 10 minutes. Well, no, I'm going to come back at about five minutes time, halfway. So about 10 minutes and come back halfway in the time to see how far you reach with the question. All right, so on the mark, get set, go. Matter of fact, let me ask you a question. Are there any questions regarding what I just did? No, sir. Okay.
Come on, Monday. I am sitting here and I'm saying, what is it? We don't know class. What is happening? I don't hear nobody sneezing, nor coughing. Is it that you're all finished? <coughs> okay, good. That means somebody's alive. All right, great. <laughs> I'm um, sir. Yes, Rafi. Never look a dilemma, you know. Yeah, I'm telling my look a dilemma. Me, me, me reach all the way to um to the turn, right? But mm -hmm. left me calculate over my parents' house. Oh no, there was you, you, you have a, you have an issue. You're more than a dilemma. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um all right. So if you have um well, once you get the the, the differentiations. Um, up to date, that's fine. Because really, I'm sure the substituting is not even my issue. So that I want you to get the differentiation of and forth. So you're fine. Um, what about the others? Are you all? Mm, I'm at the fourth. Yeah, the fourth. Okay. sir. Sir, but oh, okay. we know we can buy a calculator for exam. <laughs> 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 no, the calculator that I use is programmable, and you will be um, accused of cheating if you were to use one of these. One of these. Oh. You, you, you see me um, when I'm on curve sketching, plotting my graph on this calculator now. So, not that, so I have Desmos, but I, I didn't link my calculator to the system. So that's why I, I didn't use it last um, semester. And while I was teaching one day last week, I said, but why don't do this? So this is why I have it here now. So I'll show you how we can go ahead and Because I need to show you software. And I mean, I can show you that graph in calculator. So it's not that you're not here. All right, I'll give you two more minutes.
Hobbiskin, Hobbiskin, Hobbiskin. All right, so I'm just reading some of the comments, um, general and private. All right, so are we all finished? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fifth note, yeah, sir. Sir, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Right, right now, the final. final. All right, fair enough. I was about to say, I'll give you one more minute, Rashid. So I'll give you one more minute to pair up you. Is there anyone in the class who is totally lost? Good answer. Very good answer. Because I'll ask you, where were you? I mean, I want nobody from sneaking in my class. I don't even say good evening, you know. Straight talk. I want nobody from sneaking in my class. I don't even say good evening, sir. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, we have about half an hour left. I need to go through this one so that you can complete another one in class. So you can complete another one in class for me. Um, did we get f of zero to be one? No, f of zero can be one. What is f of zero? A third, yeah. sir. A third, one, yeah. one third. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, heaven, Lord. Copy and uh, <laughs> That's exactly what happened to me. My cat, my kid class did tonight. Do the question. Is that good thing? Can I can do the question. So the answer is a third. Just what is wrong with third. you? Copy and paste, my kidding me. All right. The, the, the wrong All right. So hold on there. Um, am I correct? Okay. Um, do, do you agree with f dash of x? You get negative two over two x plus three all squares. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And um, and f f dash of zero is not negative one, don't. No, no sir. It's going nope. to be sir. negative two nine, do Yes, sir. sir. Negative two nines. Yes, Russian. Uh, them right, man. Negative two nines. Jesus. Copy and paste. Sir, copy and paste. I beat your body. You beat my body. Because I'm trying That's to. That's why you check over your work. So you next, uh, for this round. No, so you know. no, no, say it one more time. Say it one more time. That's why you want. All right. Check I remember. <laughs> I will remember this day. Uh, Sir, um, I can't take over my work in an exam, but even have enough time to complete the paper. Um, <laughs> no. um, um, young, young, remember, you remember mid semester? You remember that you can note that I put on the paper for mid semester? Sir, just <laughs> <those two. laughs> no, no, you remember that note? That I put on the paper for mid semester? Okay, thank you. Just checking. All right. Sir, <laughs> use the block that time. Okay, all right, got you. Yeah, man. All right, so, um, all right, good. So, oh, me so me do wrong. <laughs> and it's on the right, you know, because three three is nine, nine three is twenty seven. Six over twenty seven is, geez, um, six divided by twenty seven are how much? A quarter down. Sir, it's supposed to be eight, not six. Eight over twenty seven, sir. 
Two times two is four times two is eight. You don't see eight right there? Classes sure. mean for change, so it's possible. So now we very much there as well. Other friend, so it's supposed to be two times two is four times two is eight. So it's supposed to be eight over 27. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is why I teach you well? Suppose oh, I never I teach you topic well. Tonight, sir. Huh? Yeah, I try to trick with tonight, man. Oh. Can I tell you? <laughs> No, I'm not going to is, if you're paying attention. There are copy and paste and we're pouncing. Thank you. I'm telling you, oh Lord. All right, now, so let me just know. 60 entries, 18, 18 times 2 is 36. I want to look right. And this is going to be um, 3, 3, 9, 9, 81. 36 over 81 is going to be equals to 4, 9. That's right. Talk, talk up to me. Sir, nobody never say you're wrong. <laughs> when you're wrong, we talk about we know it's right. Yeah, all right. So that one is correct. And um, then we had whoa, 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 two hundred eighty-eight. 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 All right, so 288 is correct. And then the final one is going to be, oh, negative 320 over 81. Negative 380 over 20, over 81. Sir. Yes, hon. For f of three, sir, where are you getting six from? The six? Yes, sir. All right, so it's not supposed to be 16, it's supposed to be 8, because if I change from up here... So that wrong. Your mind's supposed to be 8. So if I want to... If my leg is 36, then, sir. Sir? Yeah, it's not, it's not, oh, say it again. It's not negative 36, then. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. The mistake, that's how I could have found it, sir. But yeah, I never can the second step, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be 8. So the denominator times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator, so it's a minus eight. So it's minus eight, thanks, Charles. Minus eight times the differentiation of the denominator, which is going to be four times. Oh, no, it's not even going to, oh, it's going to be three. Yeah, three times dot, 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 times two. And three, it's 24. And 24 times two is going to be 48. So we oh, get 48. Oh, come in, no, say, God, why? Sir, you're coming to the moon, I'm back. <laughs> It's going to be 48, oh Jesus. So it's going to be 48 over um, 81. 81. 48 over 81. So I'm going to get 16 over 27. Yes, sir. I'm going to get 16 over 27. Negative 16 right. over 27. And then now the denominator, but a five times the differentiation of the numerator minus the numerator is going to be negative 48. Times the differentiation of the denominator is going to be four times two x plus three to the third times two, and four times two is eight, and eight times forty-eight is going to be three hundred eighty-four. So that is going to be three hundred eighty-four. Three hundred eighty-four. You understand? You understand? What, you understand what I was saying to you earlier? That um. If one of the differential is wrong, everything else is going to be wrong. So it's going to be 384 over... But I can't. Just go mark up. <laughs> so it's going to be 384 over um, 3 to the fifth. That's going to be 128. 243, sir. Right, over 243 and 243. It's going to be 128 over... 81. Over, over 81, right. So it's going to be 128 over 81. If I, say if I tell you what I'm going to do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you can't see what I did wrong. So this is going to be now 384, 384, 384 times 5 and times 2. So 384 times 10 is going to be 34, mm -mm, 3840. So it's going to be 3840, and this is going to be negative, no? Yes, yes sir, negative, negative 3840. Yeah, 3840. 
um, over three dot to dot. So it's going to be three eight four zero divided by three to the six is going to be whoa twelve eight over two forty three. Yes, sir. So what if we don't break it down, sir? Um, in terms of in terms of what? You said don't break it down. Don't break it down. In, in terms of what? The um, negative three um, eight forty was seven twenty nine. Um. Hmm. How do I answer that? So you, you notice I'm using my I don't know how to answer that question, but you notice I'm using my my fractional form. So when you talk about breakdown, I'm not I'm not talking about a decimal because if we use a decimal, I'm a no, round off. No, no, sir. I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm coming to you. So if I use a decimal and I get 0.3, it means that I would have thrown out some of the answers. Why, sir? It means you can throw out some of the answers because remember, I'm going to end up dividing by two factorial, three factorial, four factorial. Part. This, this all of this is clearly wrong. That doesn't need to do this last part. So I'm I'm going to leave all my answers in this raw form. So whether or not I have it as an improper fraction or an, or a um or a mixed number or an improper fraction, it really doesn't matter at this point in time slash if I use it as a mixed number or an improper fraction. What is important is that I have it as a fractional form so that I'm preserving all my answers. I don't know if that makes any sense. Until I get to this point here where I do the substitution and then I get my final answer. Okay. It, 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 I answer the question now? So the point I'm making, if you wanted to put this as um, the, the, the 128 over 81, or you, 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 you choose to put it as 1 and 47 over 81, it doesn't mean anything to me because it's still containing all your values. Okay. All right. So again, the importance of... Um, well, the good thing about it is that you won't be copy and pasting. So the good thing about it is that my differential was correct. Um, I think what I did was also copy all of this differential from the other from the other um, from the other question and didn't change the values over here. Um, so let us now do the substitution because I want to give you one more talk to do in class to make sure that I am correct. So we have one third, one third. Oopsie daisy. I don't know what is happening. So I'm gonna have one third there. And my first differential is gonna be negative two ninths. So I'm gonna have minus two ninths. And then my my second different my second differential is going to be eight twenty seven, so it's going to be um hmm. how am I going to write this? Look at how I wrote it. My a twenty sevens over my x squared over two factorial, and then the other one is going to be no, I'm supposed to be positive a twenty sevens, and then the other one is going to be um, negative sixteen twenty sevens, negative sixteen. Negative 16, 27 times all of that. All of these are being multiplied. I simply the multiplication sign. Then my f of 4 is going to be um, 181 over 128 over 81. Sir, the negative 16, 27 there, I know. Right. That's straight to the 4th, not so. Um, explain the sheet, I'm not following you. Straight to the 4th, not 81. 
Okay, sir. No man above. Yeah. Yeah, but forty-eight. But oh, 48, sorry. Forty-eight. Yeah, yeah forty-eight divided yeah. by eighty-one. I use the lowest terms. I get um sixteen over twenty-seven. Oh yeah, me just hear that. Sorry. Mm -hmm, fine. So that's one twenty-eight over eighty-one, and then forty-eight to one. Uh, and then this one is going to be, oh, and it's positive one, 28. And then we're going to have negative 120, 43, negative 1280. Over two forty three, two hundred forty three, and this is going to be x to the fifth over five factorial, and that is going to be multiplied, and then that's a negative, so then the positive dot dot dot. Alrighty, am I correct now? And let us see if we can evaluate all of that. Don't mind my black screen at top. One third is simply one third. And two nines is simply two nines. And hmm, this one becomes tricky. So eight over 26. Seven um, divided by two is four over twenty seven. You know, see what I did. Did I not have four over twenty seven there for my answer? No. I'm not sure what I And then 16 over 27 divided by 3 factorial to 6 is 8 over 8 to 1. I'm almost sure this is what I had. I think what I did was just write the final answer over 8 to 1. And then x to the fourth is 128 divided by 8 to 1 divided by 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3, which is 12, times 2, 24, 16 over 243. And wow, this one is huge. Five factorial is 120, so this is 1280 over 243 divided by 120, 3 over 7, 32 over 729, 729, that's 32. Alright, this one was open. Okay. That's what I get. Anybody got that with me? Yes, sir. Yeah, that one was okay. Um, so, sir, I did, I did, the denominator may differentiate wrong, well wrong, wrong till it can't wrong no more. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy that I copied and paste. I mean, my differentiations were correct, I mean, for the most part. Um, the denominator, that, that is, it's just that I made an error up top here with the 48 here, I had 36. And that 36 was carried forward in all of these. So it, the, the point is, what's the, learn, what's the lesson from here? The lesson here is one has to be very careful of um, your differentiation or else you are going to be running into problems. Very in nice to for your work. Say it again? Very your work, sir. Oh, Kerry <laughs> Payne, I love you, you know, what do I need to know here? <laughs> yeah, I did a different question, and I just want to know if what I have is correct. 
Okay, hold on, hold on, you know. Um, so you, Karika, um, you had a question. No, no, hold on, hold on, Karika. Um, you are telling me someone to look over my work. Karika, this is not the function that you use, don't. Sir, I did the first one. You did this one here? Yeah. I almost took over the more Karika, me or you? Sir, but me think about that I'm missing from the screen. <laughs> Well, Kerika, guess what? I don't do this question yet, you know, so you have to go wait until no, the next no, class. Sir, no, sir, Kerika, no need to look over our work. Kerika, need to follow instructions. You need thank to look, you, thank you. You need to look over our work. <laughs> <laughs> Kerika. <laughs> number two, sir. Kerika. Mm? Be... Sir, I can show you, you know. I'm pretty no, sure it's good. But you don't want to see. <laughs> okay, so check it, check it in the chat. Um... um you can see some unusual numbers. It's weird. Um, okay, no problem. Um, okay. So got, scroll it all, down to the phone. got it all right. Very nice. Proud of you. Um, I did a different question. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I didn't get the same answer, but I didn't break it down. And um, yeah, I need to work the bottom part. Fair enough. Now, um, very good, Kerry. I mean, I, by next class, you'll see the solution because, yeah. and, and that's what I'm saying to you. So they won't give you a, uh, it's okay. So maybe it's like we're asked to go up to the fifth. I did this because we're doing a class exercise and I want to see how well um, astute you guys were in terms of doing the questions. And um, I'm pretty pleased, um, you know, teacher made a mistake and, you know, whatever it is, but they, they yes, the matter. Yes, sir. It again? So, um, it is gratifying to know that you guys remember how to differentiate. What's the take home lesson in all of this? Please remember if you are not meticulous in doing your differentiation, you're going to be in problems. Serious problem. You have to make sure that you differentiate and differentiate well. Please. And I would suspect that one of these questions will come on your mid semester. Remember, we all have to um, maximize our points on our mid semester because we don't know what the final exam will look like. So we can't depend on the final exam to boost our grades. That's the point. I'm gonna make sure I tell it. Oh, 9.15. I don't think it is to finish. All right, let me just see something. Um, there's a trick for that one. We can do that in five minutes. Um, I am not going to give you any instruction for this one, guys. I'm not going to give you any instruction for this one, um, for my parents. I'm going to ask you to expand f of x equals to n x using my current series. I want you to start and tell me how far you can go with it. Start from a no and tell me how far you can go with it. And this, Johnny, will... Sir, sir, sir. And I'm saying, I'm asking you to do an, uh, a third question for me. Um, expand f of x equals to ln x using McLaren series. So I'm asking you to expand that for me. And this is in answering, partly answering Yannick's initial question. So I want you to go. Sir, how far are we supposed to go to is what Yannick was asking. And Charlene also asked um, a similar question. Just go ahead and start calculating from this. And see if, if, if everything will be fine. It's a point I'm trying to bring across. I'm not being difficult. All right. And I'm going to get it go.
By now you're supposed to be talking to me, you know. Has anybody seen anything? By now you're supposed to be talking to me. Guys, talk to me now. Sure. Mm -hmm. F of zero mm -hmm. will be undefined. Why? Because termination. No, no, no. Speak to me. Ablame. Ablame. F of zero is undefined because? Uh, termination. Charlie um, Crumb, don't play with me. F of zero is undefined because you're on the correct track and you're going to tell me tonight. F of zero is undefined because? Finish it. Because, um, oh, because zero is in the denominator, sir. So. Why are you doubting yourself on the countries? I don't know you to be a doubter. Very good. Excellent. Anybody see that? What she's talking about? Oh, so, oh, okay. You see what you're talking about? So remember, in the first place, you know, um, in the first place, LN0 is undefined. LN0 is undefined. But is it LN0 alone that to be undefined? No, sir. Even oh, oh, the, the, first, the first derivative. And, and the second derivative, and the third derivative, and the fourth derivative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody, yeah, man. So, can't work. This one has to go back to the drawing board. Um, very good, James. You know what I mean? Um, it, it is, yeah. So, my, my little story is the map current series for LNX does not exist because the derivative of LNX is one over X and therefore F of zero is going to be one over zero, which is undefined. All the derivatives will be undefined in this way because you would be dividing by zero. Very important, all right? So um, partly it is answering um, Unique's question because there are some functions, the rational functions, they will have to tell you how far to go. But the functions that are erect, sorry, the functions that are polynomial will come to an end. The functions that are polynomial, I don't have to tell you where to go because at some point in time it will end. What time is it? 822. Um, okay. No, let me just do this. Do that from picture for me. You notice I'm not giving any an endpoint. That one is a one that, that one is one that can be done very quickly. Very, very quickly. Start that from because I give you five minutes and then we talk about the answer in two more minutes. Well, remember that was we can go up until 10. Um, but I for now I'm doing 9 30. Um, and we are saving some time because we would have 
I don't want one to overload you, and two, we're saving some time because we, we've done, we understand our differentiations. Um, Tiana, are you okay? Rashim, you okay? No, yes, no, sir. no, kinda. Okay, all right. So I heard your, I heard your yes, Tiana. Very good. Um, Rashim, kinda, kinda. How? The rest of you don't just ignore us and just continue working with this one, please. I want to bring across a point to fully answer your need stuff now. Yes, Rash. Ah. Uh, what is what is the issue? Four, five. What's the issue? Talk to teacher. All right, so so all right, if we still are using we right, we're using the McLaren's um series, mm -hmm. right? So we we we're doing multiple differentiation. Mm -hmm. Differentiate and differentiate and differentiate and differentiate. Can done multiple differentiations. Let me tell you where it becomes where it becomes a little hefty is when you have those rational functions, the one over something, and you have to use a quotient rule. You see this one that I'm giving you here? It's mm -hmm. going across a point to, to your equipment. The question that you need to ask, I think Charlene also asked the same question, uh, which is a valid question. Um, you know, when I'm doing those rational functions, I can go on and on and on and on and never end. I will have to tell you where to end. But there are some other functions that I don't have to tell you where to end because it ends itself. You know, like in some relationships, and you know, after no say boy, you go see if it can work because you know, say it just did. <laughs> it just now go work out. You are go west, other person are go east. There's no coming together. Goals are different, and you just have to call a speed a speed. Okay, okay. I give you two more minutes to. Finish off this one. This one's pretty easy. On mute. <clears throat>
Sir? Sir? Yes. I hear it, sir. I know somebody says something. What happened? Um, when you when you differentiate um the third one, when you reach the third derivative, sir. When you, when you differentiate the third one, what? When you, when you reach a third derivative, there is no more variable. Would you Very still it, right? So, Would you so still what, include so, it, sir? No, because it's still be zero, don't it? Talk truth. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's gonna be zero. Um, it's gonna be zero. So it, it automatically ends itself. Is it the point I'm making now? Yes, sir. I don't know if Yannick is still with us, but yes, it, it automatically ends itself. Where am I? This one here. So I'm just gonna do this one quickly. As I said before, we can go on to 10. I just want sir, to know. Um you see, I I well, fair enough, but I don't know what the exam will give, so I have to give you um, I know, I know. You know varying types. Hoping for the, the best the, for the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna let that be equal to that. I can copy that. I'd love to copy and paste. And first derivative is going to become three x plus two. Talk truth. Repeat, sir. And first derivative is three x squared plus two. Yes, sir. Yes. And then now I can get rid of that. And then um, my f dash of zero is going to be two. Don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then my f double dash is going to be six x. Talk truth. Yes, sir. And then you can delete that. And then this is going to be. Zero, don't. Yep. Yes, sir. And then uh, F triple dash is going to be six. What is F triple dash of zero? Six. Huh? That's actually last one. Very good. Very good. You hear what Jermaine said a while ago? A lot of people that put zero right here, so. But remember, Sir, I, I should confess that I did that. Yes. And um, I mean, I moved to multivariable function. Wait, can I explain where you get the six? Um, this one, like next one. Who is that? Who does have no other one? Sir, next one. Because I kind of, me the leaves are on the blank. I'm never sure if I zero or six. When, when it's the first one is wrong, sir, the f of zero. F of zero. Oh no, no, I never, I never change if I never, I never change f of zero. I never change. I never negative hit f of one. zero. Negative yeah, one. yeah, I never, I never, I never change it. I never change it. Yeah, it's supposed never, to be negative one. Sorry. Negative one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I never, I never did it actually. I had to stop it. Um, so I'm saying to you now, f of zero. Mm -mm. When I differentiate f of f double dash of x, I'm gonna get six. So I'm finding f of zero. So anywhere in f of x, I see x, I put zero. Is there any x in f of x, f triple dash of x? No, sir. No, it's, sir. Just, it's just going to remain six. Yeah. And when I get to multivariable functions, I will come back to this point. When I get to unit one, two, three, four, I will come back to this very point. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I came to that point with my stationary functions in calculus one. Remember, we did our, calculus, our stationary points and we we're classifying the stationary points and say, for example, I had one comma two, but the one is the X value and the two is the Y value. Um, Maybe it's not responding to. Hold on. Sir? Yes, Papa. Um, you're going to send us um the course outline. 
Isso. Qual que é a classe tu? Isso. Repeat, sir. Yes, sir. Ok. You guys ask me the most obvious questions. You share. Watch me. Application of differentiation. All right, watch me. So when I did critical points with you, I think we did this question in class before. Um, all right, so my, I got my critical point here to be three comma negative eight, three comma negative eight, three comma negative eight, all right? And then when I'm classifying my critical point, I will have to substitute for the flag, where am I according to that? All right, so I'm, I'm do, do, do. my point is three comma negative eight. And when I'm classifying my critical point to, the, to determine if the critical point is a maximum or minimum, here is my classification. Remember, dy by dx is equal to two x minus six. And the critical point is three comma eight, meaning anywhere in my differential, I see X, I put three, and anywhere in the differential, I see Y, I put negative eight. But you'll recognize that when I do my dy by dx here, and I find a second derivative, the second derivative is going to be two. And I'm supposed to substitute three in it for X and negative eight in it for Y. But is this value here two and my minimum value here is still two? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Why did I not substitute three into this here? Uh, no x. Very good, because there was no x. So once you get that, this whole number here, the whole number is going to remain as it as is, right? I would have pointed that one out. Um, let me. So it's the same thing here. So I found my f triple dash of x, and I'm going to get six. When I'm finding f triple dash of zero, there is no, there is no, um, there is no, there is no x value. There is no x value. So therefore, there is no x value. So what I'm going to do, therefore, is um, is just put back the six. All right, very important. No, again, you know, mean, all right, or don't. You know, mean, all right, don't. Copy. So, in doing this part, you know, my f of, my f of zero is going to be, negative one, uh, f of zero is negative one. My f dash of zero is two. My f double dash of zero is going to be zero. My f triple dash is going to be six. Um, I'm going across a point here. Watch me. You notice in the other examples, I would have done plus dot, 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 plus dot, dot, dot. I would have had the same thing here. Plus dot, 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 plus dot, dot, dot. Meaning that, you know, I only stop at x to the fifth, but I, I could have continued with the differential here. All right? In this here case, I am not going to put no plus dot, 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 because it ends right here. If I find f to the fourth of x, I'm going to get zero. f to the fifth of x is zero. And zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is just zero. Right, so my, my McLaren um, terminates at x to the three. So why x to the three? Because I'm at the third power. I can differentiate this two times, three times, one, two, three, all right? So it, it terminates here. So there's no need for me to put plus dot, dot, dot. What I have done is my f of zero is negative one. My here is that, then I'm gonna have my zero over that. So what is gonna happen now? Are you following what, I, what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So zero over two factorial is simply zero. So there is no x squared term in that case. And three factorial is going to be six. And six divided by six is one. So I'm just going to have that. And my final answer is very simple. My final answer is going to be negative one plus two x plus x cubed. 
Did anybody get that? Yes, sir. All right. Um. <laughs> Mm. Look at that one for me, please, and look at the original question and tell me what you see. You're basically writing back backwards. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sir. Yes, please. So. Every time you get a question like this, sir, you just reverse it. Go ahead, Sasha, sorry. So with the x square, why wouldn't you write back the x square, even though it's zero over zero? Zero divided by any number is zero, and zero times x squared is zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is that. As I said before, we'll go up until 10, but um, for now, I am on track and I don't want to overload. I am good timing. This is now 9.40. We can finish at 9.45. Um, I give you an opportunity to ask me your questions. Yoni, on mute for me, please. If you're awake, that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so it, it's, uh, uh, hopefully you, I, I answered part of your question. You see, in this case, I didn't say up to the third, because if I say expand using McLaren's, it terminates at the third one. So I didn't have to tell you to do that. It terminates. Um, but when it comes on to the ones now, like go long, go long, go long, go long, like it now done, it. Um, it they will have to indicate their endpoint. Your end, yeah, the, the endpoint for the question. So I, I don't think you still get my question, you know. Mm -hmm. In the question, you say it must terminate at that point, and the answer should also include that point that it terminates at. So I'm asking if there's any question. How would you work it if they say just terminate up to that point? They didn't say include it in the absolute in the answer. Um, um, All right. So the question. So it's an expand mm -hmm. one over two x plus three using McLaren series up to. The and term x to the five. No, may I say if it said it doesn't have and including, how would you word that? Or it will always have and including. Yeah. Um. I'm just trying to find uh, a, 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 an appropriate example to, to to explain that right. So when I said up to and including, may I tell you some more? You include x to the fifth. So it means that it can't stop at x to the fourth. So it won't say um like the fifth term. I didn't do Pascal's triangle with you because Pascal is not on your curriculum. And maybe you'd have done Pascal's in, no, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have done Pascal's. So I'm trying to find an appropriate example um, for you. All right. Okay. So remember when we were doing um, Newton Ramson and I gave you two square brackets square brackets with 0, 0,1 in the square brackets. Whenever in set theory, that I know you'd have done in prop theory, um, prop and stack, sorry. In set theory, when you give your square brackets, it means that it is including. But when you give an open bracket, it means it not included. So let me just type it and show you since I'm not writing. So if I say to you, um, come on, if I give you, Bam. A comma B. Um, copy. Please, please, please. And, um, and if I give you that as folder, um, that 
and if I give you that, and if I give you that, oh crap, cancel. All right, so look at this, look at the notation here. In my square brackets, I have A comma B. In this second one, I have square bracket A, B ends with a curve. This one means that a curve at A and I end at B, I mean, and I have a square bracket at B, and both of them I have curly bracket, I mean, curve brackets. What does this mean? This means that the value A is included, so is B. So A is included in my answer and so is B. In this your case, in this your case, A is included, but B is not included. In this your case, A is not included, but B is included. And in this case, neither A or B is included. And this is set theory. So when you have your square brackets, it means say, you know what? Up to and including. So I'm going to use these values, but the two of them included in my answer. So if I gave you for argument's sake, if I gave you for argument's sake, um, if I give you for argument's sake, 3,8. If I give you for argument's sake, 3,8. What, what, what are the values inside of here? It would be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Right? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. What will be the values in the second one? It will be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because 8 is not included. Right? The other one, 3, comma, 3, comma, 8. It will be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, because 3 is not included. All right? And then this one, 3, comma, 8. It will be 4, 5, 6, 7 because my three and my eight are not included. So when I represent all of these now on a number line, it means that at three, I'm mean, gonna draw that number because I'm gonna have that device here. But it means that when I draw this on a number line, it means that I'm gonna have a, a shaded dark hole at three and a shaded dark hole at eight, suggesting that both of them are included. When I draw this on a number line, I am gonna shade three with my point but I'm going to have an, a hollow hole at eight. So, and I won't even do that here. Right, I'm going to have a hollow, I'm going to have a, a, an open hole at eight. This one is going to be a closed hole. When it's closed, it means that it's included. When it's open, it means that it's not included. Right here, so at three, three is going to be open, but eight is going to be closed. So this is going to be open, but this one here is going to be shaded. And then now them two yards will have two open circles because they're not included. So it means that my range of values will be on the inside. All right. So I am saying, I'm I'm just saying to you with the question that I want you to include um, the fifth term. Not the fifth term. Yeah, the term in x to the fifth. Include the term in x to the fifth. Then, sir, if you never put that there, would it make a difference to the question? No, it's just whole, it's just it's just a play on words. But it follows the sort of sequence right here. All right. Anybody remember this from problem sets? Or you didn't make it the same problem sure, sets? You remind me, <laughs> remind um, me of Poisson or something like that. Like a Poisson distribution? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a, a, a set set. Plus, I remember enough words from it, man. <laughs> Traumatizing moment. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, um, thank you for turning up tonight. Um, incidentally, my time with function is finished. It's for me you now to find different functions to give you to play on with the differentiation. So me you now to find different functions to give you. Let me just delete this here. So for example, you'll see me give you a question like this. Um, bam. I will have to go through and do other them something there, right? But um, we will we can we can play around with some functions. I'll try and find some functions. Um, 
So we can play around with it. But the concept is, you remember, I teach conceptually. So I cannot tell you what function the man will give you. Whatever function they give, work with the function. Just remember that you have to differentiate each time around. Just remember the formulation. Just remember that you're finding at the stationary point, at the point where x equals zero for all of them at the differential. The original function, f of one, through to f of as many as you go through. Substitute it in your formula and go to go, that's it. The only difference with any question that they will give you on the exam paper from what I just did would be the function. Everything else will be the same, it's just a function. Finally, um, sometimes they can link the sometimes they can link the function. So I can compound this function. And let me just compound it. Not to do it tonight, but uh, hence H E H E N T. Hence, you know, put otherwise. Um, ends or otherwise. Ends or otherwise. E V E L E V T. Evaluate. Um, something like that. I mean, I'll, I'll word it properly. Can I type more? It will be hence or otherwise evaluate um, something like this. Now, you would recognize that you've already expand your McLaren's, right? So all you need to just do is just go ahead and just do a, a simple integration, all right? Um, so, yeah, so something like that. But anyway, next class. Next class, we'll do with that. Right, so, they, so the, the point I just want to highlight is that they will give you a McLaren's to do, and then they can compound it with an integration, right? And you should be able to understand what is happening right here. You should be able to understand what is happening right here, and you should be fine, right? It's really not difficult. You know how to integrate. How do I know? Everybody in the class here, I would have taught either calculus or a business calculus too, right? Including Nash. So I know you guys know how to do this so. stuff. You should be fine. Um, Whatever, sir. But you know, see the message. Um, appreciate it. All right, guys. Have a good one. Sleep tight, and please to turn up. Um, Ryan, good night. And I'm gone. Night, sir. Uh, bless the heart. Sure. Turn up Tuesday. Please to turn up Tuesday. Mm -hmm. As my good students, have a good one later. Sir, I'm trying my best with All right, these sir. traffic. Uh, no, you can be in traffic soon, but I just want to turn up. I don't want to give me that, but I got from the others. But anyway, you're good. All right, sir. sir. Bless sir. up, bless up. Sir, yeah, sir. Uh, say it again. If I'm at work, I can't be talking. And that's fine. And, 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 and that's fine. And that's fine. Just send a message. I know that you can't also don't want to call upon me. Rash, what are you saying? Uh, is it possible I can give you a call tomorrow? Sure, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, cool. Right, have, you have you sorted the recordings and the um and the setting up the notes? So you should be fine in the group, in the WhatsApp group. Okay, sir. All right, all the best.